Rifaximine is a synthetic antimicrobial, which is classified as a protein synthesis inhibitor, and it works by inhibiting the bacterial ability to synthesize proteins. Now, rifaximin has a broad spectrum activity against gram-positive and gram-negative aerobic and anaerobic bacteria, and it also works on protozoal infections such as cryptosporidosis and blastocytosis intestinal infections. And rifaximin is an unabsorbable meaning it cannot be absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract, so it works only locally on the gastrointestinal tract. Now let's talk about the therapeutic uses. So rifaximin is FDA approved for reduction in the risk for hepatic encephalopathy recurrence in adult patients. So hepatic encephalopathy occur from the hyperammonemia that resulted from the liver failure to detoxify the ammonia coming from the intestine and the ammonia is produced by bacteria in the intestine and rifaximin work to eliminate these bacteria and reduce the levels of ammonia and that means it work to reduce the risk of hepatic encephalopathy. Now it is also used in treatment of irritable bowel syndrome associated with diarrhea and it showed effectiveness in improving the functional chronic symptoms in this syndrome. Now it is also FDA approved for treatment of traveler's diarrhea caused by non-invasive strains of Escherichia coli bacteria in patients older than 12 years old. And it is used for this indication because it works to eliminate this bacteria. Now rifaximin is used off-label for many other conditions such as small intestine bacterial overgrowth, abbreviated as SIBO, SIBO, and it is also used for treatment of diverticulitis, inflammatory bowel disease, bauchitis, spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, and Clostridium difficile infection. Now let's talk about the pharmacokinetics. So this medication is available as oral formula only, and it works locally on the gastrointestinal tract, as we mentioned already, and it is not absorbed into the blood, and it is executed in the feces. And regarding the dose, so it is dosed between 200 milligrams three times daily to even 800 milligrams twice a day for a period between two to 12 weeks, depending on the indication. And there is no dose adjustment for this medication in renal or liver diseases because this medication is not absorbed into the blood and this medication should be avoided in the pregnancy and it is classified as a pregnancy category C meaning it causes harm to the fetus. Finally, let's talk about the adverse effects. So those are limited to the gastrointestinal tract due to minimal systemic absorption and they include nausea, gastrointestinal upset, fatigue, peripheral edema, and muscle spasms. And long-term use of rifaximin is associated with fungal or bacterial super infections. And with that, we reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please give us a like, comment your ideas and questions, and subscribe.